you see, did you see the part the other day when the Queen was speaking to her subjects? Did you see it on the news? No. <laughs> but it was brilliant, because the Queen is sitting in front of the cameras, so got a wee bit like that, and then these five or six people from all over the Commonwealth came up, and she's going, ew, and what have you been doing during lockdown? And asking each person, and each person will, well, I've just been uh, working on an ambulance and I've just been <laughs> working with NHS. And it was really funny because she went, oh, that's marvellous. It was <laughs> So do you uh, think you're the Queen? I'm sort of the Queen speaking to my subjects today to find out, oh, <laughs> what has ever been up? What has everyone been up to? <laughs> was, that, that was that a real question? <laughs> That was to you, mate. Yes, that was you, Sarah. What was the question? What have I been up to? What have you been up to during lockdown and how oh. has it affected you? Oh. Living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working on the guns. My God, Sarah. And that's why I've got a long sleeve top on. <laughs> Ali, is that a smaller t-shirt? Is that, is that a tighter t-shirt? Because they're, they're exactly. quite impressive. Yeah. They are looking great. I've, I've, been read, I've been reading up on some tricks and some tips to make them look bigger. <laughs> you have got a wee bit of suntan as well, Sal. You have got a wee bit of sun. Was that when you were down to Bristol? Are you, are you allowed to travel right now? No, so I was, it's because I've been like, walking more, been Marvelous. training outside. Marvellous, marvellous. Yeah, Sarah, it's been good. And what's happened to your suntan, Sarah? You don't seem to have just caught as much colour. Um, ginger. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't catch the sun so well my skin yeah but you do need it is that's a wee bit long your hair looking so anybody had a haircut you can see that i've managed to keep my hair dressed and going so yeah you're looking good bill i have to say well i have been <laughs> doing a wee bit i have done a wee bit sal and uh doing some of the sessions with the institute guys doing some of the club sessions i have sort of i'm, I'm a wee bit fitter what about the uh, mobility sessions with Clacky? I get a bit of pressure. I do get a bit of pressure to take part of them, you know, so I do... I do he just writes morning. He writes morning like he's in the session, but he's not <laughs> <doing it. laughs> My mum my actually joined in on one of them. She says, Bedia, you need to be a contortionist to actually be able to do some of those moves. <laughs> they're, really, they're really difficult. And they're actually for me because mobility is what you start to lose. So what I always do is I do this, the, the introduction, I go, morning, Sarah, everyone does morning, morning, morning. Then I watch a bit of breakfast TV, I have some porridge, I drink my tea, and then <laughs> I do the last part. <laughs> so that when she comes <laughs> in, well, I guess, when you're like drinking your tea, you are using exactly. like muscles, but you yeah. need to change arms because you'll get one bigger than the other otherwise. Exactly. Um, Sal did some press-ups before she come on the screen, by the way. Did That's you? <laughs> really? Yeah. Have you got what you got today? Weights today? Conditioning today? Yeah, a um, bit of both really. Mm. Some weights, some conditioning. I'm going to do some a kettlebell session with my dad later on as well. He's put himself <laughs> in the best conditioning he's been in for years. He's no, he has. He's trained, yeah. he's competing. <laughs> At the beginning of lockdown, um, like I did uh, probably about two sessions of him a week. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, when we did the, hunt, the thousand, no, how many each come we did we do? Two thousand six hundred, was it? Yeah. You got dizzy. You got dizzy. I got really dizzy because I hadn't done judo for so long. Because in the last time I done judo was probably February in um, Paris, and then doing all those huge comments, I actually made myself ill. Do you think you'll be a bit dizzy when you start doing the old judo when we get back to things? Yeah, I think so. Because you know when you've been injured or off the mat for a while, and then you do the warm up and the, the forward rolls and the backward yeah. rolls. Even doing that, sometimes you get up and you're a bit like all over the place. So yeah, when you there's a study, there's a study that you eventually your brain gets used to that, but your brain also detrains that when you've not been rolling around, your body's get used to something to do with your ears. Oh, your so that's where it all goes wrong, Sal. That's yeah, the ears. I've got very good ears. So Sally, when's the bike coming? So, <laughs> so I've had a bit of a problem with the bike because yeah, I ordered a road bike. Right. But you checked with Sarah. What happened, Sarah? She checked with you about the type of bike because you've just got yourself a new bike. 
oh, Sal sent me a lovely picture of a mountain bike. I was like, Sal, that will do just the perfect. trick. Like, perfect. It will, like, just what you want for a bike. Mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, thanks very much, Sarah. Thanks for your help. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> then I get a message through, say I bought a bike. It's a lovely white road bike. <laughs> awesome. A racing road bike. A racing road but, bike. Yeah, but it arrived yesterday. So yeah. what happened? So I, I bought a road bike. Speak to you too. You're like, no, Sal, it's not what you want. You want a mountain bike. So then I ordered a mountain bike. So then I had two bikes. But then when the road bike turned up yesterday, I was like, no, that's the bike I want. So I want to be on the roads and I want to be on the cycle paths. Oh, you're going to and keep so, the road bike. So I'm now going to keep the road bike and um, I've got a refund on my mountain bike. <laughs> good girl, good girl, good girl. So I'm going to stick with it. So what, yeah, that's good. But what I would recommend, because of the roads in Edinburgh, and if Edinburgh District Council are listening, because the roads in Edinburgh, you know, and the potholes in Edinburgh, have you seen the tyre? What's the tyres like on the on the road bikes now? It's thin, really Perfect. thin. <laughs> so, there's not, so there's not a huge, there's not a huge surface area. You're not in no. contact with the... With the road, a, a, a lot with this mountain bike, with this road bike. So I'm going to be in contact with the road a lot, I think. But I have got a helmet. Excellent. You need. I think you'll be needing, um, do you know when you see the smallest kids on the bike? I think you'll need elbow pads. I think you'll need... <laughs> well, you were going to say stabilisers. <laughs> well, I was thinking that... And stabilisers. And stabilisers. <laughs> but, no, this is the least of my worries, because it's come flat pack. So I need to build the bloody thing. Right. So I got it out of the box yesterday, took all the cardboard, cardboard off. There's not, there's, the wheel's not attached, the handlebars aren't attached. It's not even come with an Allen key. So it might be a while to actually get on the bike. If you bring it over, and we can social distance, if you bring it over, <laughs> I've got tools, you know I like tools. If you yeah. bring it over, I'll help put it together and then we can have a, we can have a road test. Because, Sarah, what happened when you bought your bike? You got a bike, was it the start of lockdown? Yeah, so I got a bike at the start of lockdown that was what built. Was the, what was the company? What was the company, Sarah? I don't know. A bike, Edinburgh Bicycle Company? Probably, yeah. Bike Cooperative. That was the one. So I bought a bike, <laughs> and then within the first two weeks, my handlebars were like going zoom, 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 like that when I was... Cycling what, do you, what do you mean when they come come loose? Yes, the bike. <laughs> what happened when they came loose? <laughs> what happened to them? Um, nothing happened, William. So when you hit the tarmac, because the handlebars came off, because the bike company hadn't built the bike properly, what what kind of fall was it? Because you, you you're not the smallest. You know, Did you fall, Seth? Yeah, Where does the claim is a claim? A fall, <laughs> Sally. A fall. So what kind of fall? So Sarah, what kind of fall? Tell me how the fall was. It over the handlebars? Was it a slide fall? Was it a? <laughs> it was quite light, <laughs> light how a ballerina would fall. <laughs> Sarah, I would, have, finesse. I would have paid money, and, and people would have paid money to see a large. Strawberry blonde lady falling off her bike. Was it at speed? My legs are really powerful now. Some speed. So, so there was speed involved as well. Where was the fall? And how embarrassing was it? And did anyone run to help you? You're too. <laughs> Moving on. So, yeah. What happened? Was a drama? Was it? No drama. So what happened? What do you mean, what happened? I've seen the bruises. You showed me the bruises. So you've fallen off I don't the believe bike. you fell off your bike. Sally, the bruise was like that. The bruise on her leg. The bruise. Is this the beginning of lockdown set? or? Oh, yeah. yeah, pretty much. Like within two weeks of me having my bike. Exactly. Say, so you kept that quiet. She's got a bit of power. She's got a bit of power going through yeah. the handlebars now that they've come loose. No, but did anyone run over? You know how people run and you get them back. Oh. You just go, no, I'm okay. I'm fine. Two meter distance. So what happened? No, and there was no one around. The roads were the, the, it was very quiet. Right. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I'm I would still get, waiting for the bike cooperative. What do they call that bike cooperative. I would get a specialist to build your bike. A specialist. Sarah, mm -hmm. I can build bikes. 
I've been brought up on bikes. Why does it blame as a claim? I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll maybe do some Ukemis before you get on it. Yeah, I think I might have to, you know. But I'm excited about it. Like when it arrived just, I was like, I love it. Even if it wasn't built, it was, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> it would just be something different than the rower. Cause I've been on the rower a lot. I've been walking a lot. Like yeah. I think it'd be good just to change it up a little bit. Yeah. No, definitely, definitely so. It'll be good, it'll be good. And it'll be a wee bit difficult to get used to, but once you're used to it, you'll be good. When was, yeah, the, last you know, when was the last time you were on a bike? Oh, the last time, probably when we went to Lanzarote that time, and we did that triathlon. Is that when you didn't like the swimming? No, yes, that's exactly, no, I think it's you actually Japan. The water like a maniac. Oh my God. Oh, Japan. Oh, that's the first time ever. Worst time, and then getting lost on the bike as well, and out for hours, God. and still then having to come back and complete the run. I think I had a tear or two for sure. Oh, it was horrible. When I was there. Had him. That when I was there. Um. You no, I don't. Don't. I think you got lost when I was there, but I don't think you got lost the second time. Oh right, I learnt my lesson. You lost quite a bit, Sal, don't you? You do. Yeah. I night. sometimes forget which way I've, I need to turn out of a shop when I come out as well. What happened the last time you were in Japan? Remember in Japan you went to, was it Minami Senju? <laughs> um, Kofu. But when I looked at the directions to get there, I looked up Kofu Dai. I thought, oh, that's got to be, that's got to be the same place. Yeah, it is that same place. Same how place. Far, how far apart was it? Oh, it was like the opposite end of Japan, it felt like. I even had to get on a steam train to get to where I didn't need to be. And like on the way there, I was on the steam train. I had they had fans, the old fashioned fans on the train. I know the one. And I was like, look, pardon. I know the trains. Yeah, and I was like looking outside the window. It's lovely countryside. And I was sat there. I was like, oh, this is amazing. Who gets to do this in Japan on a steam train or whatever? Anyway, got to where I didn't have to be, and I was like, where the hell am I? I was in the middle of nowhere. Then I had to wait in about forty five minutes to get the steam train back to where I've come from. I was traveling all day, <laughs> like, and I was getting so cocky because I was like, oh yeah, I've been here before, I know where to go. No, no, it was horrible. And then the first session training the next day was horrendous. Didn't have you there, didn't have any friends. Like I just got battered. Cause <laughs> but I mean, it's all an experience. <laughs> Without going into too many stories, Sal, <laughs> but please tell us about the card you give the Japanese coach. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is when Bill was there, so he got to experience this. But it's very so, nice. the coach, the coach, I'll set the scene. The coach had been <laughs> more than helpful and accommodated us. He looked after us. It was Coach Khan. They looked after the girls. They took us out for a meal. They were very friendly. <laughs> they fought to the death on the map, but outside that, so friendly. They couldn't have been nicer. So Sally. The thoughtful Sally always thought, do you know what? Well, we had, I think we had some tablet or we had haggis or we gave, we gave, or we had whiskey. We gave them yeah. something to present, but Sally wanted to show more kind of appreciation. So Sally, <laughs> what happened? So I went to the 100 yen shop and um, they have these like really beautiful cards and they've got Japanese writing on them. They've got this lovely like um, origami tie thing. I thought, oh, that's really, really nice. I could write a nice message in it from all of us to say thank you and like we we're looking forward to going back and everything. What colour was what colour was the card? It was like white and black, so the writing was black. Yes. But yeah. it looked beautiful. It had like some silver sparkles on it. I've seen um, it. Yeah, it looks really nice, didn't it? Beautiful. So then I got it back to the room and Josie was like, "So, do you know what that Japanese writing means?" I was like. No, but it doesn't like it doesn't matter, does it? It looks really nice. I'm sure it's lovely. Didn't think any more of it. The next day was our last session, so gone over just to the coach, give him the gifts, give him the card. He's opened the card and just like his face said it all, didn't it? <laughs> He's like turned to all the players and just was like laughing. Everyone, everyone was laughing, and we were just stood there like, what was going on? He's like, death. Death, it was like um, a, a funeral card. card. A funeral card. Yeah, <laughs> or a sympathy card or something. Oh my God. I was like, just read the message inside. Just read the message. It was a lovely message, but it was brilliant. Absolutely oh. brilliant. Comedy, <laughs> comedy gold. 
Absolute comedy gold. That is a great day that again. <laughs> oh, did you see? Did you see that <laughs> the club ran a little uh, competition for the mascot? And did you see what won the mascot? Did you see the the competition? Yeah. Yeah. The, high, the Highland Coo. The Highland Coo. Highland Coo. <laughs> The Highland Coo with the big horns won, won yeah. the mascot. And what was the name? What was the name of the coo? Obi. 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 So I kind of think, who should we, we're going to get, it's going to get made into a mascot for the club. The kids will love it. A big coo, right? You could yeah. So a big, a big coo. <laughs> who, who could we get the, the mascot uh, costume made? What size should we get the mascot? I, I heard that. Mascots only get made with 29 inch legs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a 30, so we're all good. <laughs> You've not got a 30 inch leg. <laughs> it'll be too short. If I mean, if you get a 29, it'll be like, are they long shorts or short longs? <laughs> so, always with mascots, with kids, kids in mascots, what do you think? They'd like kind of a small mascot? Oh, definitely. A medium. Or would they like a really big mascot? What I do you think they'd think? like a big one. I think so. I personally think that, <laughs> that the kids would like a big, a big giant coo <laughs> and the mascot. And if the mascot had the same colour hair as the, the Highland coo, then it would, probably, it would probably fit in a bit better. You know, it probably... The Highland, they've got long hair, haven't they? That goes over their face. So, like, so say if someone didn't have something like exactly like that. that. <laughs> yeah? Exactly like that. <laughs> I <laughs> can't wait for a haircut. <laughs> well, I think the mascot, the mascot costume will get made in a six foot two. Well, as being a slightly bigger person, like I think, like I'd like a smaller mascot, like a little token that you could just carry around. <laughs> That's a good idea. I think we'll get little mascots made that they can put. Do you know like the Japanese ones they put on their bags? A little tiny mascot. Oh yeah. We'll get little mascots that the kids can put on their bag or hook on the bag or a key ring, Sarah. That's a great idea. Oh, we will have a giant mascot suit that you'll be wearing and get hot in the ride. <laughs> Sally and I used to think we were really cool with like about 20 different key rings on our bags after we'd been to Japan. <laughs> They'd like weigh us down, wouldn't they? Like after training, they'd be like, we got the way there. <laughs> what was it? Where was it? Where was it that Sally had the mascot? Was it in Europeans? Was it Europeans? No, um, it was at the Masters in China. Yeah. <laughs> that just I think we just done it to kill time because we were just we were there days before. We were a bit jet lagged and everything. And then we just thought it'd be a good idea to join this um event. And then we saw this mascot costume, we're like, yeah, let's put it on. <laughs> it was a corporate expo. <laughs> like, ah. <laughs> that was hilarious for us. They didn't find it quite so funny, but <laughs> no. <laughs> so, what, have, we been, have we been reading? Anybody been reading anything? Anybody been cooking anything? Um, what, you, what you been reading, Sal? Um, um, Netflix. I've been reading Netflix, the, all the movies on there and the series and stuff. Anything decent? Anything decent? What watching? Um, not overly, no. Like, I watched this Formula One um, documentary. Uh -huh. um, I think it's called Drive. Drive to Survive, I think it was called. Right. That was awesome. That was really, really good. Enjoyed right. watching that. Um, but they've just been watching rubbish little films, really. But I've it's run out of stuff to watch. Sarah? Um, do you know what I am reading? Tell me. Oh. What is that? Oh, Train Oh, Sarah. Scottish classic. Train yeah. Spotting. Is it mentions, mentions is Gone Street, which is cool. Oh. So, like the first place we knew in Edinburgh, pretty much. Is it different from the 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 movie? The, the movie is it different yeah. from the movie? It's, yeah, it's really good actually. Like I'm not a massive book reader, but I'm like halfway through it. Oh, well, oh that's cool, says. How about you, Bill? Um, mm, my reading's not been up to much, um, <laughs> and I've watched most of Netflix, and I've watched. I've watched quite a bit of the football that's been on, so I've been watching the football that's on, and it's nice to see all the footballers are social distancing on the park, you know, so it's good. To, I've been watching a bit of the football, so. <laughs> but social distancing in the crowds, but not in the, on the pitch. But that'd be a bit of a rubbish game if there was social distancing on the pitch, wouldn't it? But I have been, I have been cooking a little bit. I have been doing a little, little bits and pieces. 
Mm. I'm kind of the, I'm more the sushi side of uh, the kitchen. William's kitchen's more kind of the sushi, it's kind of higher <laughs> end. Higher it end. looks good. Your sushi looks really nice. Right, there's a place called Eddie's Fish Shop, I think, and where is it, and where is it, Sarah? It's in Brunsfield. Brunsfield, I think it's in Brunsfield. Eddie's Fish Shop, and an unbelievable fish, unbelievable fish. And they do sushi that's Japanese sushi tuna and sushi um, salmon. I don't know how they decide who's sushi trip salmon and sushi. Well, the salmon like swim going, I'm a sushi salmon. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, he's <laughs> my sushi. Get him back. I don't know, I don't know how to choose. Right? But I've actually got specific fish for sushi and specific fish for, for eating. But I'm sure you could use both. But that's where we've been going. And sometimes the queue has been an hour and 30 minutes. I don't know what they do inside the shop or how long they take. Because when I go and I take, can I have a bit of that? Can I have a bit of that? Thank you very much. There's 20, 26 quid. It's expensive. But it uh, didn't take me two minutes. Whereas other people are in the must be talking to the fish. But they've got lobsters. They've got, I don't know if they've got live fish, but it's a wee bit like China when we've been to Not China. Like China. Yeah, uh, we've got live things in the supermarkets. It's a wee bit like that. So they've got lobsters and they've got other things with their claws all tied up, you know, lying in the... You know, <laughs> you know you've got to pick them. I, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd like to do that. You've got to pick it for its death sentence. I don't mind eating the dead stuff, but picking a lobster that's like that and then taking them home to eat, I don't know. It'll be very fresh, wouldn't it? Very fresh for you. I'd probably end up keeping them as a pet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I've been doing a bit of that, I've been doing a wee bit of that, but I've not, Sarah mentioned the other day that I should really be pulling my weight more, um, the cooking side of things, but I've been doing a lot of eating, so. Mm, we can see. <laughs> Do you think so? No. I thought I'd put this on a bit more slimming. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get the memo, did I? Blue t-shirt, blue t-shirt, white. That looks good, it's a good combo. Okay, what order is it on the screen? Because I'm there, you're next to me, and Sarah's below. I'm top right where the Queen was. Yeah. Sarah's top left, and then uh, you're the shortest, as usual. Have you got any taller <laughs> during lockdown, Sal? Um, I, well, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Some days I feel taller than others. Like today, I don't feel very tall because my muscles are a bit like sore. Uh -huh. But then, like, sometimes I do feel a bit taller. But I actually nearly killed myself last night. Nearly actually killed myself. So way. I was in the kitchen putting stuff away. And I had these diluting bottles at, at the top of my, on the top of my shelf. And it slid off and smashed on the floor. But it was, like, that far away from my head. Glass. Glass. Careful. So, I mean, you it's been all right. I'm still here. But, yeah. So that was talking about the height and the top shelf and everything like that, but that was the link. So yeah. I just know, yeah, but as you get older, you eventually get smaller. And a couple of times, of course, social distancing, but um, I've been in the vicinity of uh, the big yin. And uh, this, tower, this tower seems to be taller and towering above me. <laughs> It'll be different when we start to practice <laughs> judo again. I'll get her back down to my height when we practice judo, but I think <laughs> she has other ideas. It's not it's not you're looking forward so both years both years have done phenomenally well during this period where your weight training and your conditioning both of you i can't believe two athletes as old. what's your combined age what's your combined age so 66 66 66 so, so uh somebody who's retired now retired from what six over so you've been a year's retired between years, right? You retire at 66 now. Is it 66? I think so. That'd be our combined age. Yeah. Retired now. It's unbelievable that both of you have got, I can, honestly can't believe it, that both of you have got physically stronger and bigger at your time in life. You know, it's, it's, it's been fantastic because we're not doing judo, so we need to focus on something else. Both of you have got stronger. So are you looking forward to unleashing this physicality on the world of judo? Yeah. 
<laughs> no, be good. you know what? It'll be good when we know when the competitions are back in, I think. Yeah. So at the minute, it feels like now, because it's been so long, it feels like conditioning and weight isn't enough anymore. You know, when you had, like for me, I feel like when I saw the times getting better on the row and stuff, I was like, yeah. that was giving me the motivation. When I was seeing, like, I was lifting heavy and stuff, that was giving me motivation. But now I feel like it'd be nice to have a competition that we know we're aiming for yeah, yeah. to get that focus back in the judo again. Well, yeah, no, I have, yeah, have one. Yeah, and, I, like, I think we had a conversation yesterday that, like, we can control what we can lift in the gym and control, like, trying to beat times on a rower. But, like, at the minute, judo's not in our control because we're not allowed to do it. And I think that's probably the hardest. Well, that's mm. what I'm finding the hardest at the minute because it's something that, like we don't know when the competitions are going to be back, and like they said September, but that's not looking likely. So, like it's completely out with nobody knows. So I think that's mm-hmm. that's probably the hardest thing to deal with at the minute. Like, so it's like going to the going getting stronger and trying to beat your times on the bike or the row or whatnot. But then it's just the unknown is probably the most difficult. So as a, as a coach um, during this time, you only focus on what you can do and you can only control today. That's not what happened yesterday. You can't control what's in the future right now under this, these times. So if you keep and continue to prepare like you're preparing and always, like the SAS, you're always ready to go. You know, and if you're ready to go and you have that focus, because I always say to you, like, the line doesn't sit there going, oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be catching that bison or that buffalo <laughs> in three days. The line just sits there. And what is the line ready to do? Pounce. <laughs> It's ready to attack. It it's, up. Not. <laughs> it's, not. It's, it's lying there and it's not ready. It's not thinking, oh, my shoulder, I better get warmed up before I start that. It's just ready to go. And if you like the lion in the Serengeti, is ready just to pounce on that small antelope and tear it to pieces, then I think you'll be okay. <laughs> oh, thanks. Okay, I'll speak to you too <laughs> later. And now I'm like, I'm going to end this broadcast saying, oh, have a lovely day. <laughs> must be lovely chatting to you both. <laughs> lovely chatting to you both. Have a nice day. Bye. 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 Have a nice day off after training. Yeah, thanks, Bill. Bye, <laughs> Bye sir. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, guys.